Any of you have any thoughts or comments on this in your musical background? Maybe an experience where <clears throat> using this stuff was helpful. Um, Andy, right? Andy was a high school band instructor, so he's I know you're aware of a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Any any thoughts? So um Oh. I was just saying I did take one year of music theory in high school. I think it was 12th grade. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it was 12th grade where I took one year of music theory. Yeah, that's good. And so you just like learn all the, I think you did learn all of the notes, but like mm -hmm. it was mostly like music history with mm -hmm. Monzo and Beethoven. Yeah. But, I mean, I know it's not relevant when it comes to like learning the actual keys, but yeah, just, yeah. Like, just but it does kind of encourage you to keep learning, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Music history is a fascinating thing. Angie. I just have a quick question. How, because um, most of us here are musicians, but there are people that aren't musicians mm -hmm. that are strictly sound people or yeah. sound or other media people. Mm -hmm. But how is this helpful for them? Because I think it is, but mm -hmm. how would you explain the, not that they have to be super proficient in music theory, yeah. but just somewhat aware of what your music is supposed to sound like so that then they can mix or good. Like that's that. a good question let me let me touch let me answer that strict strictly re, uh, around vocals mm -hmm. as a sound guy you need to recognize who's got the melody because that's what the people follow the melody if you're singing harmony and the sound guy's like She's cute. I'm gonna raise her up. <laughs> um, <laughs> that just popped in there. Sorry. <laughs> is, this, is this recorded right now? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll edit it later. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever the motivation for turning up the harmony singer, um, that throws the congregation off. Hey, because did, the to your credit, yeah. sometimes a couple of our sound guys have. <laughs> okay, that makes there sense. You go. <laughs> Very good. Very Thank good. You. Yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> or recognizing that person's really off. I gotta pull them down. That yeah. is, I feel like that's super important too. Not that yeah. you want to silence people, but if there's a rough moment, it's very distracting. So having yeah. that ability to ride it is yeah. good. Yeah. And here's yeah. here's something that's. Scales will help you with, understanding um, this theory stuff will help you with. The more you dive into training, the more you're going to hear it. And the thing that's really hard, we just heard this um, from Shane in the youth band. He comes and goes, how do you instruct someone who can't even hear that they're doing it wrong? It, they're not even recognizing that either the timing's wrong or the chord is even wrong or the note is wrong. You... You got, that's really hard. Yeah. So the best thing to do is to practice. And if you get any takeaway out of this day, um, practice. Take that away. Practice more. Practice more. Practice. There, there is a page. The last, I think, the last yeah. <laughs> that talks about how to practice in there. And I. Uh, Tara, yeah. There's a quick question. Actually, Barney just kind of brought up to me. But, uh, yeah. So like. Um, also, with, with just the sound in general, the difference between the sound in the house and the sound on the street. Yes. And being able to mix that because uh, like I, I send the link. My family is in Australia, they're in New York. So oh, that's cool. A lot of them don't have a church home, so I yeah. send them here. Yeah. And just kind of the art of um, being able to understand that just because maybe it does sound good in the house doesn't yeah. mean it sounds good online. Yeah. Yeah. So just kind yeah. of to Andy's question as well as so learning the art of being able to yeah. you know, mix and master uh, possibly both. So what, what would you say to that? Well, so firstly, Brendan's going to touch on that after lunch. We're going to talk about um, just have, have you guys as musicians having a general knowledge of sound or audio and then how to, how to mix just a little bit. And he's, he's going to actually bring the computer out here and demonstrate a few things. Um, but you brought up a very good point that the online mix is separate. And uh, you start diving into a world, um, well, let me just say this. This is going to be one thing we talk about. 
Learn to go back and listen to yourself. <laughs> so is that not scary? Because usually the online mix is a, I'm gonna call it a little more naked. It's a, not doesn't have all the effects on it. And things stick out a little bit more. We've all seen those memes, what you think you sound like and what yeah. you actually yeah. sound like. Yeah. But it's good exercise to go back and listen to yourself. And um, you know, one, one of the notes for the, the thoughts and stuff at the end is learn to laugh at yourself. But don't leave it there. Don't then, leave it there. Then laugh try to at yourself, yourself and fix it. Because <laughs> yeah. um, you can start to hear, you can start to hear things. Yeah. Um, That's totally up to you. What, what? Every day, at least for half an hour, I would say. Yeah, yeah. But the more you practice, the better you get. That's a great benchmark. I mean, that's yeah. that was my rule for piano for ten years. Yeah, yeah at least. Do, you, do you, um, the Spanish guitar player? I'm forgetting his name. Rodrigo. Rodrigo. Do you guys ever see Rodrigo Rodriguez? Did he ever come he's through here? here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like he's amazing. He's amazing. He says he practices like still. Couple hours a day. That's his living too. I'm that, I mean, it is his living, but he's sitting here going. I mean, I would look at him and go, I, I don't. He doesn't need to practice, but that he still practices a couple hours a day. So, it's since we're yeah. talking about pra practicing or on the subject, if on that page, that it does. Um, and how you, <laughs> how you practice probably is more or just as important of how much you practice. Um, because That's you, the playing with the worship team one. No, it's how to practice. Oh, oh, right sorry. Wrong that. Um, <clears throat> you know, number one is striving for good tone. Like, number one on the page? Yeah, it, sorry. It's, I, tied, it's titled How to Practice. I forgot we had this it, page. It's like the page fifth five. page. Number five. Page five. <laughs> if, if practice time is just a time to... For you to bang on your guitar and worship, I mean that's great, but that's not practicing. <laughs> um, so it's you're trying you're trying to make yourself sound better, and so striving for good tone even in practicing. Um, the slow tempo is like super important, especially I I feel like for piano. Let's go back to the good tone real quick. Yeah. Um, good tone is a very broad subject because there's so many instruments. Um, uh, you're not only talking about tone in the way you play your instrument, but a lot of times in our worship setting, there's tone with the electronic part, the effects part that guitars bring and piano effects bring. And, and um, you can put all these different tones through the instrument. Um, I was having a talk with Brendan and uh, we were talking about this subject of how much pedals you use and electric guitar, and he realized, and I don't know how you phrased it, that it's more important to create the good tone in your playing before you add the effects. And uh, so turn it all off and play your guitar really well and create feeling and tone out of that, even, um, yeah. And then, then you start adding the effects to it. Because uh, if, you, if you can play that guitar and make it sustain without a compressor pedal, um, you can fit into the music. That Eric Johnson clip, in the beginning, I didn't play the section, he's playing all these chords, and they're just spot on with a perfect strum, and the tone was perfect. And he's just moving really fast and smooth. No effects, just a little reverb. And it was just tasty, tasty, tasty. So... Um, you like that, Brendan? <laughs> oh yeah. But and again, it's it, depending on what your instrument is. If you're doing guitar, it's that as you're playing, you, every string is, you know, you're not, you're doing it correctly yeah. for every everything you're doing. Because if you're practicing and you're not practicing it correctly, you're learning it incorrectly, yeah. and it's yeah. not going to just get better on its own. So whether you're practicing scales or chords or a, or a pattern in a song, do it as slow as you have to do it so it's perfect every time. And then you practice that 25 times until you got that. And then you move it up. 
So it takes a lot of time. I know my family gets sick of me playing the same thing over and over because mm -hmm. with a grand piano, you just you can't hide away in a room somewhere. Yeah. But. <laughs> I really enjoy it. Oh, good answer. Have, good answer. I have a little <laughs> angel that practices. Actually, it's, it's super interesting now because our church utilizes multi-tracks um, for the main services a lot. And the um, you guys don't use the guide, right? You just... You use it for the count-in, but the, not... But not the, so so now, what used to be just her playing and singing is now chorus, two, three, four... Click, click, click with the track going, and then you got this guide thing telling you where to go, which we're going to talk about that uh, with the band later. But um, yeah, it's good stuff. Is this, is this question time or no? We'll just let you guys do um, Sure, fire away. We're so, flowing with it. Um, the, the, like the art of practice, because I know, um, you know practice is obviously important just like in, in life in general. But I would really love to have your guys' opinion on, um, like, let's say, when someone thinks of practice, they may be thinking. Or in the heart of not even know to do it. Like the art of falling in love with practice, like why and how you do that. Why and how you fall in love well, with, with practice. I mean, why? Because you know, because you want to be able to do this and enjoy it. I, I, I don't know that I always enjoy the practice part, certain aspects of it, but with any discipline, it's it's the end goal that you're going through. So yeah. one, one thing that I do know, motivation is like the key word. What motivates us? And now we enter the spiritual element once again. Because if, if you're motivated by Jesus and wanting to bring your best to him, you will do anything for God. Anything. So that's why it's so important that you have a relationship with the Lord. That, that you connect with the Lord because now you're motivated to bring the best gift that you can bring. It's like, I'm going to practice. I have no choice but to practice. I have no choice but to bring, bring this better than I already have it. Yeah. I can add to that too. Uh, whenever I practice drums, like the worship set, um, to get me motivated, sometimes I'll start with a song that I just like playing. Yeah. Like I'll turn That's on Afterlife on Switchfoot and stuff like that. <laughs> just to get me That's a, get yeah, that's good. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the fruit of it. You know, after, and you're able to, that thing you didn't think you were going to be able to do, now it just becomes kinetic memory for you, and it's like you enjoy doing it. Yeah. And it's like that pushes you on to yeah. do more than you thought you could. Um, so you're, it sounds like you're entering the world a, a little bit more of improvising yeah. by the by playing the notes that are in the scale of the song. Um, there could be creative in a band setting that could be too busy yeah. and could walk walk too much on the vocals and stuff. <coughs> um, but um, yeah, I think and I think there's different um, aspects you're practicing. I guess what I'm talking about. There's, there's practicing just your instrument in general and getting yeah, better I was at just it. Gonna touch on it. Or if you're practicing for, I have a set coming this weekend and I want to get this lead line down or whatever it is. So you're practicing that specific song and you would love to get to the point where you're not like, what, what is that thing again? I don't remember. And you, that freezes you up, throws off your timing. So you get to the point where it's just kinetic memory, it's easy and it's fun. Like that's, that would be the yeah. goal, of course. Yeah. And it, that takes time. I, there's certain songs that have, taken me a while to get the pattern down because it's just yeah. more difficult. Yeah. But yeah. once you get it, then it is fun. Yeah. And, and with that, it, 
we always need to be practicing the fundamentals. But like she said, there's a difference between the fundamentals and the set that's coming up. And now you have to bring in, I work full time, I'm in school, and I've got a family. And how do you balance all that? So you, you have to practice the set. Um, but the, the memorization of the set, come on. It's just, when you know the music, it's just more enjoyable. Can I get an amen? <laughs> and if you're glued to a chart, it's like you're holding on to the bowl and you're not enjoying it. And it's just kicking you around and it's no fun. Um, and I will admit, we both are riding the bull sometimes and it's hard to hang on. And but we're also in a different era. Like yeah. when, we're, when we lead, obviously we're gonna choose songs that we, that we know well. But because we've now joined in, you know, the worship team, which is super fun, I'm really enjoying it. But sometimes there's a lot of songs that it's like, and different chord progressions and, that I have memorized. That would, that's challenging to me. Because yeah. it's like, oh, what's, what's already in let's, here? Let's different. step back even and explain yeah. what our roles are these days. Because our roles have changed through the years. And um, from, you know, from our Florida world, 2000, we moved to Florida, and I was the worship leader for Little Calvary Bureau, 40 people, and she, I had to force her to play piano and sing with me. Force, she didn't want to. She gave in because she knew that I was the head. Oh my gosh. And she said, <laughs> You want to no. delete this part too? <laughs> uh, you know, got to keep it light in here. Oh. No, she. Um, and Your Bible's the first Peter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bring oh. it, let's start Bible thumping. Yeah, Bible thumping. Yeah. 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 Um, but we got to have fun, right? Um, she obviously uh, grew and God has used her, where if you've noticed in the beginning, I like to step back, and there, there is a worship leading gift there that I feel like, why should I lead as much when she should, can be doing it? So I let her lead, and if you look, I'm, I'm eyeballing over, and, and like, where's she going with this? She's listening to the Lord. I love that. I love that. That's the spouse um, taking it. So there's that role where it's just her and I. But as Vero grew, we started adding a few people onto the team, and we entered the band era. But this is the band era of um, floor wedges and very loud stage volume and um, uh, not that many worship songs in the big bucket of contemporary Christian music. And uh, most everybody knows these songs and then the known hymns. Um, so we we worship at Vero, grow the team for 12 years, and then I have crazy ideas about sailing ministry, and that changed our trajectory, which meant I'm off staff at Calvary Vero now, um, and we're not in charge. That's difficult. Now we're not in charge. We're s submitting to new leadership, and the new leadership was 19 years old. And it's like... Oh, this is hard to gel with 19 years old with no experience. That's hard. And we're like, that, I don't like that. So the Lord was, for for longest time, is like, we just need to step back and be humble. <laughs> and learn how to work with this. We're the body of Christ. So we're just learning, constantly learning how to be a better Christian, how to be a better musician, how to submit to... Uh, some young leadership, um, all of it. It's, it's a challenging season coming out of, you know, from 2013. Now, Called Higher continues to develop, and some students joined us, and we start traveling as churches would ask us. It wasn't a big advertised thing. So you guys remember Karis and John Mark and Christian, some of those guys that would travel with us to here and lead worship with us. Um, it was great having some key young people join us. Well, they, they end up getting older and moving on in life. And then um, we go to St. Pete and we help the team there. Some of you know about that chapter. And then the Lord calls us back to Vero. The day we move back to Vero, literally, literally, the day we move back to Vero, new worship leader is hired at Calvary Vero. The same day. It was, everybody knew it was coming. We were all converging at the same time. Who is this guy, Pete Denham? And uh, we're like, 
well, we knew he comes from California, we knew of his dad, and kind of heard him do some music in the past, but um, now our role is, is submitted to this guy who brings good spiritual leadership and really good musicianship to worship leading. Um, it's super interesting because we are learning so much from that younger guy. And when we talk about um, uh, the playback app a little bit more, in-ear monitors and some guitar stuff, I just soak in from this guy Pete and I'm so thankful for him. And we're not in charge. It's such a wonderful thing. <laughs> um, so he gets to deal with all the dynamics of people and we just come in and enjoy. <laughs> um, so uh, constantly learning, constantly growing. And um, it's, it's, it's such a sweet season for us because we get the opportunity to lead with, you know, where we're the leaders. Um, and even with like the called higher choir thing, we get to choose the music a little bit more or like t this weekend, this tomorrow, we'll lead worship. We have, we're pray through those sets. Um, but normally Pete does it all. Pete chooses the band. You know, he'll ask us if there's a song that we like, but then he'll throw all that stuff on the planning center and multi-tracks, and now it's our job to practice to it. So now we have to practice this song, and we'll dive into that a little bit more, but um, everybody's encouraged to bring their part to that, to, that, um, to that band, and it's really fun. So we have a unique um, thing where Kim's asked to play piano sometimes and sing. And then she's asked to play acoustic guitar and sing. Um, sometimes it's just kind of we're just, you know, we're just part of the worship team. And yeah. I'm really enjoying the challenge. I feel like I'm enjoying the challenge of, of being in a different role. Yeah. But it's just now it's like learning songs differently. And I, yeah. I, I'm really enjoying it. But it is, it's not, <clears throat> it's different than what we've been doing. So. Yeah. Like he said, I, I feel like we never stop learning and growing. Never come to the table thinking, this is it, I got it, because there's always more to glean yeah. from. And like yeah. you're saying, learning from Pete and others, it's just, yeah. um, it's, it's so good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a sweet team. You know what we need to do? We need to take a quick break.